Howdy folks, Tech Scrab here with Tech Scrab Noon Outdoors. I hope you guys are ready to make it weird because it's time for your Tech Scrab Noon Outdoors Saturday morning cartoon awesomeness. If you guys want to support the channel in a way beyond simply watching the videos, you can go to techscrabnoonoutdoors.com, check out the Make It Weird sticker, the Make It Weird shirt, the Life Ain't Like the Pornos, Hunting Ain't Like the TV Show shirt, because by God ain't that the truth, and of course, the Kill With Stick shirt. Now if you guys are looking for a reason to start a fitness journey, or need a reason to continue a fitness journey. You don't have to be in good shape to be a good hunter. However, as a hunter, you will never regret being in good shape. So I strongly suggest that you check out traintohunt.com, become involved in the Train to Hunt challenges, and I hope to see you guys one of these days at a Train to Hunt National Championship. If I can do it, I promise you, you can do it too. If you're a traditional bow hunter, you can go to 3riversarchery.com and use the discount code of TexGrabner in your checkout, and it'll give you a discount on all your Trad Life supplies. You support the channel by using the code because it shows your support to 3 Rivers for my channel. I really appreciate everybody that's bought the merchandise, and I really appreciate 3 Rivers for sponsoring this channel so that I can more easily acquire gear that I would probably be buying anyway. So anywho, I mentioned making it weird. Now, I went over to Iowa and saw Becky Bones, the friendly neighborhood plant lady. We went out to a wild area on public land, and we identified, or rather she identified, several plants that deer are naturally going to gravitate toward that are naturally organically occurring in the wild. Because food plots, if you're broke, ain't feasible. If you're hunting on public land, they're obviously not feasible. Or if you're hunting on pasture land like I do, they're not really feasible. And so if you can figure out where the deer are naturally going to be foraging and get alongside of them. They'll damn near walk up and introduce themselves to you. And I promise you, every single plant that Becky would find alongside the trail that was on the list of the top plants that deer naturally gravitate toward, I would look on the trail, and not only were there specimens of these plants that were heavily browsed, but also I could instantly find a deer track and pretty much find a spot where I could hang a stand at if I was actually hunting this spot. However, I also don't have enough points to draw an Iowa tag, but I got to break the Illinois whitetail curse first. But I hope that this video is going to be helpful to you guys in figuring out what to actually look for that's organically going to appear in the environment when you're setting your stands so that you can figure out where the deer are naturally going to want to show up at and set up your ambushes at close range for traditional bow hunting. I'm Becky Schumacher, your friendly neighborhood plant lady, and I'm going to teach you today how to identify some of deer's favorite plants to forage for in the woods so that hopefully you can follow them around and get an idea where they're going to hang out. This is called a Ossier dogwood, and it's uh, either a tree or a shrub. And when you look at it, you can see that the stems of the leaves and closer to the newer growth is kind of a reddish brown color with lots of little speckled lenticels. And when you look at the leaves, you can see they have kind of a opposite pattern and the veins go in kind of a curved pattern from the middle. And they're a lot easier to spot in the winter time especially if they're more of a decorative variety because the stems coming out of the ground will be bright red. So if you happen to see any red stems sticking out of the snow, that's red Aussie dogwood, and that's something that the deer are probably gonna go for. I'm here with the bane of allergy sufferers everywhere. This is common ragweed. And this one is usually pretty easy to spot because the leaves are very finely cut. And this time of year, it's got its seed head, so it tends to stick out like a sore thumb. It also has these red bristly stems that the color stands out against all of the green. And one of the reasons that deer like this one so much is because it's one of the last plants to lose its greenery when fall and winter tend to get closer to the more of the freezing temperatures. And 
if your allergies aren't too bad, uh, feel free to get close to it and maybe you might be able to spot some grazing deer. I'm here with a multiflora rose and this is actually an invasive weed in Illinois and Iowa. And it definitely is a little harder to spot because this time of year it doesn't have any flowers on it. Don't worry, when you walk into it, you'll know about it. <laughs> yes, it does have some very nasty thorns as you can see. And usually it has rose hips, which are these uh, little red berries that appear on it when the flowers are spent. But those tend to get grazed off pretty quickly by birds and other ruminants that might be walking by. So the deer will usually go for this plant because the leaves and the stem stay tender long into the winter time, way past any of the other plants that might be around. So if you get caught on some thorns, maybe take a look around and see if any deer have been nearby. This here is wild grapevine, and we actually covered this in our forage video back in spring. Uh, as you can see, the berries are all gone, but it has really tender tendrils and stems long into the winter time. It's a good sugar repository. They're likely to go for it. And this one's been a little bit damaged by mites, but once the leaves fall off, it's pretty easy to see it because it's tangled around everything. And the tendrils are very small and curly. And we know for a fact that the deer go for this because we were on our way up here and we saw some deer tracks in the mud. So definitely keep an eye out for wild grape. This plant here is greenbrier and it's a little inconspicuous but it gets rather big and climbs up trees and shrubs and the leaves are very glossy and kind of segmented down the middle. When it, after it rains, it's very shiny. Uh, you don't wanna to get too close though because it does have some pretty nasty thorns, especially when you get towards the base of it, they're all bristly and black. And the easiest way to spot it is to look up more than down because it tends to, it loves to climb anything it can get its tendrils around. And these tendrils are like iron. They're very, they coil very tightly around things and can actually kill certain trees and shrubs. But we actually had trouble finding some green briar as a specimen for the video because most of it around here is pretty small. So it's definitely a favorite of the deer. This kind of goes without saying, but it bears repeating that deer love acorns. Unlike walnuts or hickory nuts, they're easy for them to crack open and eat. So any good acorn, good size acorn producing tree about the size of a marble, uh, you're probably going to want to hang a deer stand near it. White oaks, red oaks, bur oaks all have nice big acorns for them to eat. This is pretty high up on the list for deer foraging plants. It's a berry bramble and it could be a raspberry, blackberry, um, the easiest way to spot it is it has this downy stem that you can rub off so it'll look kind of a whitish green in the distance but then when you rub on it it just turns regular green and of course like a lot of the plants we've been talking about it has thorns and I think a good point to make is that nine times out of ten if a plant has thorns it developed them over time because animals were grazing on it so much it was trying to deter them. Not really doing the best job, but it's a good indicator for humans looking for deer forage material that if it has thorns, they're more likely to go for it. And once the leaves have fallen off, they usually go to strip off the tender bark, but right now the leaves are very tender and easy for them to chew. So if you see berry brambles, be on the lookout for deer. There's actually a deer track right next to the tripod stand for the camera. So we know that they like this area. This here is pokeweed and it's one of the easier deer forage plants to spot because it usually gets very tall and the stems and the ripe berry branches are a beautiful magenta color. The unripe berries are kind of green and they droop down like this and like neat little, they almost look like the undersides of mini pumpkins. And the leaves are really smooth, perfect for deer. They don't have any fuzzy furs on them and they can get to them easy. It's one of the earlier forages towards the beginning of deer season because once a frost comes, it blasts this whole thing black and it's just a shriveled mess and they won't eat it. But since it's so easy to spot and tall, it'd probably be really easy to get a, get a hiding spot close by. 
it also self seeds readily. So they tend to grow in really big patches. So if you find one, you're probably going to find a few more. I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, God bless all my sports in America. Join the NRA to protect our rights. Please check out my friends over at threeriversarchery.com. Thank you very much to those of you involved in law enforcement and those of you serving in the military. And thanks for watching Tech Scrabbing Your Outdoors.